out. This is Zach from after um, recording and editing the podcast. Obviously, even more stuff has come out. And I don't think I explicitly said that the point of this podcast is to be a basis of some ideas that I suggest for you to go away and further educate yourself on. I'm going to try and educate myself on even more and everything I talk about during this le- uh, this lecture, this podcast. And if you like this podcast, it helped you maybe learn some things you didn't before, give a like on YouTube or even give me a message and I'll happily do even more research and make longer podcasts so you can sit and listen to them and help learn about the situation. But I'll just let you jump straight into it. Hello and welcome to Distraction with me, Zach, your host. Normally this is the podcast, I've done about 11 episodes and I normally try and distract you with the things that have been distracting me in and out of quarantine, whether that be books, movies, TV shows or music. But this week there is something much bigger and more important to discuss and that is the Black Lives Matter movement. This, in Honestly, this is the fourth time I've had to try and record this episode because I, am, I feel really, really stressed, I feel really upset, I have very, very emotional, um, which I think everyone is looking at the stories and the videos of coming out of the protests in America. And there's three main things that people who aren't in America and can and can protest need to do, and that is to sign petitions, donate to organisations such as bailout funds, which are important, and also to educate yourself. This podcast is acting as a means to help with the education, especially for the white English audience, such as myself, who, with our curriculum at school, failed us and didn't teach us about the institutionalised racism in the West as we grew up. I'm going to try and go through everything. I'm going to go through a short presentation from an Instagram account about uh, the racism we weren't taught in school. I'm then going to go through some recommendations of documentaries, music, podcasts and films to watch that discuss uh, and represent racism well. And then I've got a short presentation at the end which discusses ethnicity in the media, which I learnt about at university and the ways in which that a homogenised white culture is shown and produced in traditional media all the time, even using um, black actors, and even when black culture is shown, the ways in which that they try and either homogenise these cultures, or if they dismiss black culture in general. It will make more sense when I get to it, but please stick around for that. And I'm going to jump straight into education at a school level so there's an instagram account which I, which is sorry there's an instagram account which i will link below it's called das penman and this has a really really good post and it's basically the uk and what we weren't taught at school you can go and read through this and i'm going to read it out on the podcast here for maybe people who have been inundated with information or are at work and a bit busy to be able to read up uh, as much as you'd like to. So here it goes. This is all from Instagram. If it's in first person, it's from the writer. I believe some of this reluctance to acknowledge racism ingrained in our society comes from a lack of accurate, unbiased education about our country's history and its role in oppression across the globe. Ever had a history teacher who brow- proudly tells you that Britain once owned nearly a quarter landmass on earth? Did you learn about the slavery on British soil? Which civil rights movement did you write essays on in the US or the UK? Do you mark? Do you know who Mark Duggan was? It says many of us have been fooled by a curriculum. It's now the time to remedy, remedy this as our mid-education comes at the cost of black lives. And this is so, so true. I can't even tell you. I can tell you about the slave trade. Um, the literal slave trade that ends up in America but we were never taught anything else it comes mainly through movies and documentaries and then the education that I found during the protests in America so the first part of this post talks about colonialism this is often framed as explorers from Britain travelling abroad and setting in new countries the reality is that we stole land and resources from indigenous people primarily across Africa and South Asia in the name of British Empire Indigenous folk were forced off their land they had survived on for centuries and subsequently brutally killed. They were also killed in large numbers when they went back against their oppressors. The Commonwealth of Nations still exists today as a striking example of this. There are so many countries across the globe who have Union Jack on their flag, a degrading reminder of the continued entrapment that Britain is responsible for. Britain, if not one or if not is, is one of probably the worst countries in the world. Um, regarding human rights, slavery, just taking land that's not theirs. We can see this in the slave trade, we can see this in Ireland, we can see it everywhere. The next point, and these are short introductory points for you to go away and be proactive and do further research, um, which I will talk about in a second, but the next point is slavery. 
I think a lot of but I think a lot of people did receive some sort of education on the slave trade. But did you know that slavery was abolished in 1833, and the Treasury forked out 20 million pounds at the time, which is worth about 16 billion pounds today, to repay slave owners for the loss of their air quoting property. This debt was still being repaid to the sense of those slave owners until as recently as 2015. And where was the money coming from? It was come from British taxpayers to pay these people. If you condemn the legacy of slavery in the US, you must also condemn that of in the UK. We are the ones who transported slaves to America and we brought them back here too. There are black Britons today who have no idea who their ancestors were and know nothing about their heritage. And this is because slaves were stripped of their identity upon arrival and were given the names of their owners, making it impossible to trace their ancestry. The next one, which is probably the most glaringly obvious point of failure in the curriculum which we had is civil rights i was never taught about the civil rights movement in the uk i know all about the us but i couldn't name you one british civil rights activist this is due to lack of education and a lack of motivation on my part it happened the bills were passed and it's over now right wrong Understanding why and how civil rights were fought for and achieved in the UK can show us how to enact similar change today. We owe these pioneers so much we ought to at least know their names and learn from their work. They then give a list of things to Google and to go away and educate yourself with. I only know of one of these from a lecture at university, which I know a little bit about. uh, But these are things you should all go away and research. That's the Bristol Bus Boycott, the Campaign Against Racial Discrimination, the Mangrove Nine, the McPherson Report on the Establishment of Police Complaints Authority in the 1980s, and the Notting Hill Riots of 1958. That's the one I learned about, the Notting Hill Riots, and I have a really good PowerPoint on it that I got from university. I don't know if I can link it below, because obviously you have to go through it in the Northumbria account, but if anyone wants that, just give me a message, and I'll happily send out the information. The next bit is about police brutality, something I never really thought of in the UK, but it's glaringly obvious that it's here. I'm sure most people in the UK remember the London riots in August 2011 following the murder of Mark Duggan by a police officer. The riots lasted a week and resulted in over 3,000 arrests and the death of five people. The officers involved in Mark Duggan's murder were cleared of any wrongdoing in 2015. This is what I think would have happened to George Floyd's murderer if they hadn't caught him on camera. There have been countless other instances of police brutality and murder of black people across the UK for years, but they are not part of the public consciousness. We have to shout about these when they happen. I think it's easy to see our police as different because they don't carry guns like in America, but it's just not the case. Any police force that upholds laws put in place by a racist society is in itself a racist institution. The police are not here to protect all of us as white people. We have to use our privilege to help protect the people they want, which is most notably the black culture. So those are some points and I'll link it below, like I said, and then we've got even more points at the end for help you to go and do your own um, research. But it's really, really interesting. uh, And this account does loads and loads of different posts and it's really class. Everyone should go and check it out. But the next thing I want to talk about is my recommendations of things that I have learned through about racism through. So we'll go through some books that came on a post from that website. Uh, And these books are... Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race, and that's by Ed Lodge, Ed O'Lodge, and that is on the Northumbria uh, Library. If anyone has access to, I know lots of people have just finished uni or may not go to uni, but if you do have access to a university library, lots of these books will be on there. Me and White Supremacy, Leila F. Saad. White Frugality by Robin D'Angelo. And then this one is free, and my friend retweeted it on Twitter. It's called Ethnicity, Race and Inequality in the UK. It's linked below and explains a lot of black history not taught in the UK education system, and it's free for anybody to access. So please go and give those a read. I will be doing so as well. I'm not being a hypocrite saying you should all educate and do this. I will also be doing it. The most recent podcast that I've listened to uh, that discuss racism uh, and documentaries, both by Louis Theroux. He has a conversation with Lenny Henry and a conversation with KSI, otherwise known as JJ, in his podcast Grounded. I know I kiss Louis Theroux's ass a lot, but both of these conversations do delve into racism and they're so new and prevalent. It's really, really interesting. And he has documentaries on the former Supreme Leader of the KKK. He also has them on the Westboro Baptist Church. So go and watch lots of his things because lots of those discuss racism in a way much more upfront than we're probably used to. 
Other documentaries on Netflix which also do this is LA92, the story of the 25 years after the verdict in the Rogney King trial that sparked several days of protests and violence and looting in LA. Filmmakers examine the period through rarely seen archival footage. That's on Netflix right now. I'm going to be watching it tonight. The other one is The 13th, which is an in-depth look at the prison system in the United States and it reveals the nation's history of racial inequality. Again, that links back to Louis Through. He has lots of documentaries all on BBC iPlayer or on Netflix which are about the prison systems in the US and when you watch them you see how fierce the racism actually is. Like I said, still Sam Titions and Donate, um, they are two of the most important things but research and education is another some films which i have watched which i think uh also help this is two most people have probably seen which is get out which is directed by jordan peele and this is the story of two characters when chris a black man and his girlfriend go to visit her parents upstate for the weekend they uh, chris finds Chris reads the family's overly accommodated behaviour as a nervous attempt to deal with their daughter's interracial relationship. As the weekend progresses, a series of in- increasingly disturbing discoveries lead him to, and I'm going to say spoiler alert here, so skip 30 seconds if you haven't seen Get Out, but this basically leads to him being... They try to... Uh, what's the word? They try to change him. Like, oh, this is a horrible time for me to have a brain fart. They try to br- brainwash him, basically, into becoming their slaves because they see black people as lesser than them. And I think this is a very good um, example of them portraying what is basically happening in the media, of the media doing this in the exact same way. Obviously not strapping them down and going through these mind melting exercises, but the media are doing it in a much longer way and are getting through to so many more people than we realise. The second one is Black Klansman, this directed by Spike Lee, and this is where Ron Stalworth, an African-American police officer from Colorado, successfully manages to infiltrate the local Ku Klux Klan branch with the help of a Jewish uh, surrogate and eventually becomes its leader. And this is based on actual events, and it's a really, really interesting story. Go and give it a watch if you haven't seen it before. Those two films, I might not have explained them that well, but they really give you an in-depth look at racism in America, uh, especially over the last... 30 years uh, and in the end of Black Kansman it links it back to modern racism in a way that I've never been moved as much as before in that the final film I will talk about is Sorry to Bother You, I watched this recently it's directed by Boots Riley an alternative version of, in an alternative version of Auckland area in America Cassius Green, the character, gets a telemarketing job and finds a commission and finds the commission paid job um a struggle as a black man trying to sell to a predominantly white audience. This all changes one day when a veteran advises him, a veteran in the industry, not like a soldier, uh, to use his white voice and the attitude behind it make him more appealing to the customers. With a bizarrely high-pitched accent, he becomes a success. He's of his colleagues form a union to improve their miserable jobs. He then goes through, he then becomes like a power caller and goes through this system that's predominantly white and it's a really good example portraying what the working and class system is in, is in the US. It has a very big twist at the end and I don't want to spoil it, but you should all go and watch it. It's on Now TV and Sky Movies at the minute. It's Sorry to Bother You and It Will Blow Your Mind so I'm not going to say anything about it and I lied, the final film I'm going to talk about is Into the Spider-Verse and although this is just a comic book movie and a Spider-Man film it's really important in modern times as we talk about it's been discussed before how any superhero could be any ethnicity any race, if race is a thing that's a whole different argument um, and we've always talked about this but no one until this film has ever actually made in uh, a cinematic universe in modern times a black superhero character so in the spider-verse introduces miles morale as a new form of spider-man in one of the timelines and i think it's a really important film really good for kids to watch and i just think it's a step in the right direction sorry if all of that was just absolutely shouting at you um but i really hope it sunk in in some way This is the final part of my short podcast, which is ethnicity in the media. So this is a subject I learned about university in both first year and second year. And it's a story, I'm basically talking about the three things that the media uses in order to instigate white culture as the most predominant culture and most important culture to us in movies and TV shows. We begin with a quote from Richard Dyer in 1997. 
Racial imagery is, the cent- is central to the organisation of the modern world. At what costs regions and countries export their goods? Whose voices are listened to at international gatherings? Who's bombed and who... Who bombs and who is bombs? Who gets what job? Housing access to healthcare, education and cultural activities are subsided and sold in what terms they are validated. These are all largely from racial imagery. Investigating a culture's racial ideologies help determine the structure of popular media texts like TV, film and music. Right. I hope that made sense. That's a lot of academic waffle, but it's like I said at the beginning, that's basically what I was trying to discuss. But we'll jump we'll jump straight into it. I'm sure everyone's understanding. Texts are analysed to better understand how the media reinforce cultural and ideological power hierarchies, systems that usually award privilege to white individuals at the expense of non-white individuals. Media texts can reflect hegemonic, hegemonic racial ideologies concentrated on the ways these texts invite consumers to accept whiteness as the norm in relation to issues of race. In essence, the images and the words most commonly used in the media to discuss whiteness reinforce its privileged place at the centre of our understanding of race, and white becomes the overarching norm. It does this in three ways. To understand race in the media, we need to look at four key areas, exclusion, stereotyping, and assimilation. I'll let that sink in. Exclusion refers to various cultural groups... uh, to to the various cultural groups that are symbolically annihilated or written out of history and or de-represented in the mainstream media. This absence reinforces ideological power structures over representing the dominant white groups in media texts. So these are just my notes, but basically that means that one way to get around having to force non-white culture into white culture during films and TV is to just not show it all, it's just excluding it, we never see it, and if you look at lots of the films and TV shows that you're probably used to and were brought up on as a kid, you will have seen this. Um, yeah, it's just obvious. Stereotyping is number two. Stereotyping and the process of stereotyping is the, is constructing misleading and reductionist representations of a minority racial group. Media stereotypes, by definition, make value jump judgments about worth taste and morality of another culture stereotyping establishes the hegemonic norm of whiteness by largely reducing realistic or affirming images of racial minorities black actors won oscars and exactly what these films that they won them for so and the way that they the way they award awards and actors like this is it gives an incentive to make more of these films and push them more into these stereotypes in order to win awards we can also look at disney which most of us know and love and the way that they stereotyped um ethnicities and groups of people in their early cartoons and when you go on disney plus now and you try and play a film from the 1950s it pops up with a disclaimer saying that we now live in a different time and Basically, they were, I'm pretty sure they were pro-Nazi, very heavily racist, and this stereotyping really helps reinforce a very um, an audience that maybe doesn't know well, or even an audience like us, if we're told it that many times, we will begin to believe it, even if we don't mean to, and we try not to. Thirdly, assimilation. Assimilation... Uh, by which media texts represent minority groups in a positive light, while simultaneously dis- dehistoricizing and stripping cultural identities of characters in films and TV shows. Assimilated. So this basically means that, and I don't think I worded that right. So assimilation is they would get black actors and cultures, and they were trying to assimilate them into middle class or upper class white cultures that largely reflects the perspectives of white individuals. I think the most obvious. And easy to understand example of this is like in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, um, assimilation supports the ideological systems of white privilege by constructing media, by constructing middle class life in the media and norms as implicitly white. So the way that a Fresh Prince of Bel Air is portrayed, it is a black family, but they're portrayed in the, oh, what's the they're portrayed in a way that traditionally you'd probably not notice a white family normally being in these middle class houses with their jobs. So that's sort of the most basic way that I can describe, and these are important things to look out for. Again, another important thing to look out for, which we talked about at uni, is propaganda. You're seeing videos and pictures of some police standing up and protesting with protesters, and this is classic propaganda from a fascist government, and there's tweets and reports about it. Again, be proactive, go on Twitter. You can see that 
when the cameras go away or even later on people tweet yeah after he said this he then maced me in the face he then shot a rubber bullet at my friend it's not as innocent as it seems the government and the police are against protesters they are instigating it and the media is not to be believed the good thing about twitter and instagram is that we can get the most accurate and truthful news and um, probably never we could never have had before and by posting on Blackout Tuesday and using the hashtag Black Lives Matter, you are clogging up this system and we're not getting the vital information and videos that we need to help fight the government and the systems that are putting that are helping racism still exist to this day. I hope that helped. I hope that helped educate. I hope that maybe put some info on some new horizons. You've got some films and documentaries and podcasts to watch. One thing I didn't actually talk about was Childish Gambino. Uh, regularly on the podcast I've talked about him before in community and his music but he is someone I'd never he helped me want to learn about he grew up in the projects in New York and he talks about a lot of racism in his stories about what names he's called at shows the difference in how he was treated before and after he became famous after he left the project how people in the projects then looked down on him because they thought he was looking down on them but you say no it's a community we need to be against it give a listen to his album camp um just listen to the stories and the lyrics and it really really pulls you in and it makes you realize especially during this time just exactly how tough it is i hope you go away and make some of your own judgments education research please send me anything you find um if you want anything i've talked about that i forgot to link below maybe just give me a message and we will fight this. Just remember to sign, donate and help educate yourselves if you can't be protesting on the front lines. And thank you. I will be normally returning to podcasts next week on my YouTube channel and or on Spotify. So thank you.